All right. Man, oh man, the internet of the NASCAR community has blown up big time due to the whole news breaking that Chase is moving over to the nine car for Hendrick Motorsports and William Byron's going over to the 24 next year. People are losing their freaking minds. Like losing it. Like people who accepted Chase into the 24 are the ones freaking out the most. Like, oh yeah, we accept Chase in the 24 and then he's the new driver of the 24 since Jeff retired. But now that someone else is going to the 24, it's a completely different ball game and they can't support the 24 because someone new other than Gordon or Chase now isn't driving it next year. Does that make any sense? Like, you're seriously fixated on a damn number. It's a number. Drivers don't own their numbers. In this case, Jeff owns the 24 now. But still, grow up. Hendrick Motorsports, yes, is going in a different direction for next year. They have three very talented young drivers, all under the age of 25. 21, 19, and 24. The youngest being 19, which is William Byron, who was supposed to be driving the number five. That was briefly driven now of Casey Kane, who's net leaving and drinking most with at the end of the season. Um, we don't know where he's going, so now news broke today about the number change and people are losing their minds. It's ridiculous. People are like, I wasted all my money on this 24 gear and he's only been in for two seasons and blah blah blah. Yes, it's a little frustrating that we have all this like new 24 gear with Chase's name on it and it's now going to be going to turn into William Byron and Chase is going back to the number 9 car that he originally drove in the Xfinity series and drove throughout his majority of his racing career growing up. It's a Elliott family legacy and he's super excited about it. Chase posted a video on Twitter super ecstatic about it and I just love seeing him happy and that passionate about being back in the nine car because that was his dad's number when he was in cup and it's just refreshing to see a driver that happy to support and live on the family legacy it with that number car even though I don't like for me I don't care I'm grateful that he's just driving in general. He's my driver. Number doesn't change anything. Was I happy he drove the 24? Yes. But I wasn't a fan of his just because he drove Jeff's old car number. Number doesn't make the driver. The driver makes makes it what it is for themselves and people will keep complaining oh I should have been retired and blah 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 he shouldn't have driven 24 in the first place but people heads up Jeff Gordon hand picked Chase to drive the 24 and didn't want to see it retired and NASCAR doesn't retire numbers they don't so get over it but anyway Silly season has just been out of control, in my opinion. Matt Kenseth is out of a ride next year. We have no idea where he's going. Eric Jones took is taking over the 20 for in JGR. Um, Dale Jr. announced probably back in April that he is retiring at the end of the year. And the guy who filled in for him last year for 10 races, this 24-year-old 
of Alex Bowman, who did an amazing job in those 10 races. The finishes didn't match his performance because his performance was inc like amazing. He led a bunch of laps in Phoenix, won the pole, on the verge of probably winning his first cup race, but that didn't happen due to circumstance that we all know happened. So, and, you know, JGR has now two young drivers entering this season and next season. We had Suarez come in and get shoved into the 19 after Carl Edwards retired. And now Eric Jones is going to be in the 20. So, JGR is now, will have Bush in the 18 and Denny Hamlin in the 11. So, we'll see how that goes. And with Ford, the Penske team is adding a third car, at the number 12 car, which Graham Blaney was officially announced the driver of. Super excited about that. And Paul Menard's taking over the 21 and bringing along his sponsorship of Menard's. Shocker, I know. But still to have a Wood Brothers on it, obviously, because it's the 21 Wood Brothers car. Um, and yeah, so Hendrick Motorsports is the big talk of the day today and blew up my Facebook feed and Twitter because people are being super dramatic over a number. It's a number. Chill. Either you support the driver or you don't at all because you can't, you need, you should follow the driver, not the number they drive. I was a huge Jeff Gordon fan, still a Jeff Gordon fan. I've been a Chase fan since he started in Xfinity, before he was ever in the Cup Series in that 24 car. When he made, they made that announcement that he was coming into the 24, I was super thrilled. Not just because he was in the 24, but he was part of the one of the best teams in NASCAR. Like, Hendrick Motorsports has Jimmy Johnson... Seven-time champion, former driver Jeff Gordon, who was a fourth-time champion with 93 wins. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty exciting time for Hendrick Motorsports because they're getting a bunch of nice, young, talented, classy, respectable drivers who are just going to take Take NASCAR to the next level, I believe. With Chase in the 9 car and Byron in the 24 now, things are going to get crazy. And now Bowman in the 88, even better. Got good crop of young guys coming in. We got Eric Jones, Suarez, Larson. I hate to say it, but Larson. <laughs> Who's blowing up NASCAR at the moment <laughs> with three wins this season. And... Uh, so many others like in Xfinity and Truck there's such amazing young talent coming up that we can't pass by and another thing people keep making judgments that Dale with Dale Jr. retiring that NASCAR is going to die in a slow painful death it's not people chill he's not leaving the sport completely He's going to be an Xfinity owner still with Junior Motorsports with his sister and Mr. H. Of, and, um, and he's going to be in the broadcast booth for NBC. Ugh, not a big fan of NBC. Sorry. And and got some drivers who are up in the air with their rides that we don't know where they're going. Casey Kane is one of them. Kenseth. Possibly Danica Patrick. We don't know. And Kurt Busch is one that I'm super shocked about because he's a former champion. Daytona 500 winner. Kenseth is a champion. Like, it doesn't make sense that how Danica still has a ride. But these champions who actually win races or contend every week possibly don't have like a solid ride next year or something set in stone let's just say that 
Danica only is in the sport for the money aspect with for sponsorships and that's about it and the fact that she's a female I'm sorry to say it but it's true at first I was like super stoked about it but since she won the poll at Daytona in 2013 she hasn't done anything no nothing relevant all she does is do yoga and drink wine and not and wreck all the time sorry sorry Danica fans but that's a true statement and when's the last time she got a top five? Never in cup history <laughs> of her cup career, I should say. She won pole to her name, hasn't won a race, and she's wrecking and wasting money within every car she wrecks pretty much every week. And she wonder why she's she wonders why she's doing so bad. It's because of her. All her teammates have the same equipment. But she's the one who can't get anything done. Kurt Busch has won a race. Kevin Harvick has won a race. Boyer is being more competitive than he was last year. Danica is the only one not doing anything. Anything. She never contends for a win. She never, she never will. So just face it, Danica fans. Okay. So anyway... That's pretty much the big news for the week of the day, I should say, because Cup Series was on a had a week off, and all the all the drivers off enjoying their time off, and they coming back for Darlington Throwback Weekend this weekend, which I'm excited about. Trucks are doing are in Canada this week for the road course, and yeah. I'm excited to see all the throwback schemes on, on track, especially all of Heather's Motorsports. So we'll see how that goes, and yeah.